to being a presenter or a keynote present presenter, one of the worst things that you can do is be very stiff and professional. Has anyone ever been to a conference? You see this a lot in the kind of industry body. I, I used to see it a lot in local government conferences where people would stand at the lectern and literally just let, read their notes. Yeah, it's quite monotone. Yeah. In fact, I remember Amy and I used to run leadership conferences with the company that we worked for. So Amy was the national events manager and a big part of her role was pulling the whole thing together, huge conferences. <coughs> and do you remember that one year, Amy, our boss, we'd, we'd, they pay a lot of money for these keynote speakers and there was one keynote speaker that literally stood at the lectern and just read verbatim their script and it was like, we've paid you $6,000 or maybe $8,000 to stand there and read a piece of paper. Not good enough. So don't get too caught up on your script. The other thing is you don't have to come out and be all Michael Jackson, you know, moonwalking onto the stage to make an impact. Yeah, <laughs> go for it, push back. But if it's your style, that's totally cool. If you are a larger than life person, then that can work really well. But the most powerful impact you can make is by being authentically you and human. Share your emotions, be real, make little fumbles and foibles. People actually empathize with that. But if you share your story from your heart, you will never really have a problem. Because humans have a natural desire to want to support and empathize. I mean, sometimes you do get crazy, mean, nasty people in a crowd, but the majority are there because they, they, want to, they want to learn from you. And if they see you nervous, their hearts will be with you, cheering you and f hoping that you get better, as long as you're real and authentic. So the key is just be you. You don't have to be anybody else. And the great news is it takes nothing to join a crowd. It takes everything to stand alone. So give yourself permission to stand alone and be okay. You know, it's interesting. Some speakers, uh, when they come on stage, they create a very famous entry. So there's a guy called Frank Kern. Has anyone heard of Frank Kern? Yeah. Internet marketing guy. His style, he would go into big rooms with lots of corporates and suits and he would rock up. Has anyone seen, any, he's changed his image now and he's very polished. But has anyone seen any really early Frank Kern? He's like looking like Mark Tuckle. Really messy, greasy looking hair, would look quite daggy. Yeah, at, at making millions by the way, like a surfy kind of dude. And before he would go on stage, he would take his shoes off and he would stand barefoot. And I often do that actually, because it's just practical reason. It's not to make a statement. But he studied NLP and he uses a lot of very clever NLP in his presentations. But he would do that to basically just create a um, change of state. You know, get people to really wake up and notice, all right, what's this guy saying? What's he got, what's he got to share with us? It does something to the brain. Has anyone else actually seen a presenter open in a very powerful way? Mm -hmm. Yeah, what did you see, Pushpa? Um, Sebastian, the guy that does that 100, 100 things to do. So oh, he's yeah. Always, he's always walked barefoot. Oh, so he comes on barefoot from the start? And he's yes. He's been doing that for a very long time, but it was very powerful because he was in, uh, where he was presenting was a real estate arena. Yeah. And so people, uh, you know, how they are so very good. Yep, uh, they're all suits, they're polished, they're not expecting barefoot. Yeah. In fact, I remember when I did the master class and Sue joined the Lifestyle Business Builder. We did our introduction master class. And one of the things that Sue said to me was afterwards, I just love your style. I love that you took your shoes off. You're just so natural and real. So I thought, oh, that's great. I'll just keep doing the take the shoes off. It suits me much better. In fact, I might as well leave them off for now. I walk around bare feet most of the time. But it's, it's nice to know that the right people will like you for who you are and the wrong people won't. Anyone else seen anything powerful opening a keynote? Michelle? Lucy Bloom um, is a, has been a CEO for some huge organisations and she has a bright pink mohawk and wow. she wears matching bright pink stilettos. Yes. But always jeans or black pants and just a t-shirt top. Yep. And she stands there and she, as she walks on stage, she creates a presence. Yes. And then she stands there and she asks, I think one of the conferences I went to with her, asked everybody to put their hands up if they were ready for a really boring, mundane presentation uh. that they were forced to go to by their employer. Yeah. And sort of all these people put up their hands to, well, you may as well all leave now because that's not what's happening. Yeah, <laughs> nice. Yeah. 
and that is a powerful technique. If you're working with a reluctant crowd, good one for you, Catherine, good one for you, Lindley, in the corporate world, you will get sent a lot of people who don't want to be there. And one of the things that I always used to do, because I ran a lot of mandatory leadership training, is say, all right, who actually wishes they weren't here right now? And people would look around and, all right, yeah, I'll name it, yep. I say, look, I know you're probably all thinking, oh, not another bloody leadership training, but let's actually make the most of our time together. And people would start away and go, okay, she's called us out, we might as well make the most. Now, sometimes I would get one person who would still say, uh, stay arms folded and go, no, nah, this is a waste of time and I'm going to bloody prove to you that it's a waste mm -hmm. of time. In fact, at Tea Tree Gully, there was one guy that went through the Unearthed. Remember when we did the Unearthed program, Raylene, out there? And he did that for eight months, I think, this program went, every day. And the first thing he said on day one is, this is a bloody waste of time. I wish I wasn't here. So, okay, that's fine. But, you know, you've got to show up, do the stuff. We worked with him, tried to nut, nut that we couldn't crack. And on his feedback form, a bloody waste of time. I wish I wasn't there. That's all he had to say about the whole experience. He did tell that experience from day yes. one. He was. Well, he that's right. He made the decision and he committed to it. And that's just some people, and that's one of the things that I learnt, is your job is not to make everybody like you, mm -hmm. but to work with the people that you can to do the work that you want to do.